Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VGW group. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hey, all Welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening today. Uh, go check out ReallifePharmacology.com. We've got a great uh, PDF, absolutely no cost to you. Uh, it's on the top 200 drugs. Uh, we you know, lay out some mechanism of action stuff and some of the most important clinical pearls you're going to need to know uh, as a pharmacist, nurse, uh, whoever's taking pharmacology classes, for example. Um, so go snag that for free at reallifepharmacology.com. All right, so let's talk about the drug of the day today, and that is azathioprine. Uh, brand name of this medication is Imuran. And this medication uh, serves to basically suppress the immune system, okay? So from a mechanism of action standpoint, how does it do that? Um, And I'll talk a little bit about why we would want to do that coming up here. Uh, This drug is uh, metabolized into active metabolites. Those metabolites can actually get uh, placed or incorporated into uh, the DNA replication process and ultimately kind of mess up that DNA replication process and uh, stop it and prevent um, that cellular process from, from going further there. So ultimately what this can do is cause issues with um, the immune system and we're trying to basically blunt the immune system and we've talked about you know several medications previously um, as to why we would want to do that. So classic examples uh, of disease states where we're going to use azathioprine, uh, Crohn's disease, uh, other autoimmune disorders, lupus, uh, like rheumatoid arthritis, uh, ulcerative colitis, uh, and lastly, you may see it in uh, transplantation. So again, situations where we're trying to Uh, suppress the immune system and prevent rejection uh, of an organ transplant, for instance, there. So uh, I will say azathioprine, um, I I can't think of a disease state where it's like absolutely the go-to agent, like you're going to use this absolutely first line. Uh, And one of the big reasons there is there's a lot of toxicity associated with with the medication. Um, And one of the the big things that I, I wanted to mention that's really come uh, to fruition in the last you know five ten years uh, is some of the genetic testing things, and this drug has some uh, concerns if patients have certain uh, genotypes and, and phenotypes. So uh, the two potential uh, enzymes pathways where azathioprine is broken down are what's called TPMT and NUDT15. So first TPMT, that's thiopurine methyl transferase. And just like NUDT15, uh, that is a pathway essentially for deactivation of the drug and shutting down its activity. Now NUDT15 uh, basically stands for nudex hydrolase or uh, you know, nucleotide diphosphate. And again, this inactivates another uh, active metabolite of azathioprine. So what this means is that if you have a patient, and we can do uh, particularly TPMT testing is uh, more mainstream, if you've got a patient who is a poor metabolizer, so basically that Um, enzyme, that process doesn't function well, what's going to happen is those active metabolites from azathioprine are going to accumulate. And when that happens, obviously that leaves patients at risk 
for increased toxicity. Okay, so TPMT and NUDT15. Those are uh, two things that, if you're a pharmacist listening, I, I have seen uh, some of those things come up on on board exams and things like that too. So um, definitely uh, uh, remember that enzymatic process. I think that's an important thing to uh, pay attention to. Uh, renal function, uh, azathioprine isn't heavily um, dependent upon renal function. If you get a patient that's less than 30 mils per minute creatinine clearance, uh, then you might want to think about you know some dose reductions and things, or at least look up that, that information there. Okay, so kind of tying in, let's, let's talk a little bit about adverse effects. So as you know, we get more active metabolites hanging around, um, as we increase the dose, we're going to put patients more at risk for adverse effects. And the first and most obvious thing I think to think about is uh, infection and cancer risk. Okay, Higher the dose, the more immunosuppressive activity we're going to have, the more likely it is uh, that we're going to encounter infection risk and potentially uh, cancer or malignancy risk. And there's actually a boxed warning um, on that cancer risk. So very, very important to remember that with azathioprine. And you know, I think this is one of the, the big reasons why you don't see this agent used very often unless the condition is very, very severe that we, we need to treat. Uh, other uh, potential issues, hepatotoxicity, uh, pancreatitis has been reported, hypersensitivity, skin reactions. Those are a little bit more on, on the rare side, particularly pancreatitis and hypersensitivity, skin reactions, um, but they they certainly have been, been reported. So now the most common adverse effect, and maybe I should have led with that, but um, the most common adverse effect is actually nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, so GI upset type stuff. And this is a uh, dose-dependent adverse effect. As you escalate doses of azathioprine, obviously you're going to uh, run into that risk a, a little more often. Tying into adverse effects, we want to talk about monitoring parameters, of course. The AGA, that would be the American Gastroenterological Association, um, recommends that TPMT actually be tested for and you assess if patients uh, have issues with that enzyme. So if they're they're a poor metabolizer at that enzyme, that's going to uh, put our patients at risk. So uh, AGA actually recommends uh, testing for that with the use of azathioprine so you know and understand that a patient may be at, at higher risk for uh, adverse effects like myelosuppression and, and infection and things like that. So um, that's one thing to, to definitely consider as far as monitoring parameters, uh, particularly when it's it's first started. Uh, as therapy is going on, obviously we're going to monitor uh, CBC, white blood cell counts, things like that. Uh, liver function, uh, that's also going to be an important issue. You're going to monitor for infection risk, uh, you know, cancer risk, things like that. Uh, and then renal function as well, you're probably going to get that uh, baseline or, or maybe have it uh, from previous labs as well there. So uh, those are a few important uh, monitoring parameters and, and things to think about uh, with azathioprine. All right, let's take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material like BCPS, BCACP, BCGP, BCMTMS, or the NAPLEX exam, definitely go check out meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. We've got a growing list of resources, including full packages on, on study preparation. A great way to support this podcast, as well as getting some uh, great content to help you prepare specifically for those uh, exams as well. So again, go check out meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. Also, if you're a nurse, a nurse practitioner, PA, med student, physician, uh, we've got books on uh, polypharmacy, we've got books on drug interactions, and these are all a lot of uh, case-based, real-life scenario situations 
uh, that you're going to encounter out there in your practice as a healthcare professional. So again, go check out all those links to Amazon Books, Audible Books, uh, meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. All right, so let's finish up with drug interactions. Allopurinol. Uh, this is definitely one I have seen come up in clinical practice, and I have seen this on board exams as well. So allopurinol increases the concentration of azathioprine active metabolites. So adding allopurinol to somebody who's taking azathioprine is going to put them at risk for those toxicities that I I talked about. So I think that's a really, really important one uh, to remember for sure. Uh, Clozapine, that's one I, I kind of think about. That's more of an additive effects type of thing. So clozapine, obviously, we're monitoring white blood cell counts and the risk for those dropping. And adding azathioprine onto that certainly could uh, increase that risk. And that goes for um, other agents as well that may be immunosuppressive in nature and, and reduce white blood cell counts too. So um, not necessarily just clozapine, but that's kind of one, one unique one I, I think about there. Uh, vaccines. So it's going to be important prior to starting azathioprine that we assess vaccination status. Uh, ultimately, azathioprine can impact a lot of vaccines, and what it's going to do is it suppresses the immune response. So uh, it's going to reduce the efficacy of vaccines. So very, very important to assess that um, and uh, factor in some of those risks for patients as well. Uh, hepatotoxicity, uh, kind of like myelosuppression or dropping white blood cell counts, um, that's going to be an additive effect uh, for a lot of drugs. So classically, I think of uh, amiodarone, methotrexate, valproic acid, maybe a carbamazepine. All these drugs can have um, hepatotoxic type effects and you add it on azathioprine and, and we might uh, increase uh, those risks there. And lastly, let's, let's mention warfarin. Um, there's a possibility of azathioprine to actually reduce warfarin's effects. I wouldn't put it crazy high on my radar list, and obviously what we're going to do in that situation, if a patient does need warfarin, uh, we're going to simply probably monitor INR and adjust that warfarin dose accordingly uh, if azathioprine uh, is necessary. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap up the podcast for today. I hope you enjoyed it, found it beneficial. Uh, If you did, leave a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Uh, Greatly appreciative to those of you who have already done that. Uh, It helps uh, keep me going, of course, to see uh, some of the the positive reviews, and I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, And it uh, also helps um, get us a little bit greater recognition on search engine results and things like that, too. Um, when the the podcast is is rated highly. So uh, definitely appreciate all of you uh, taking the time to uh, leave a note and obviously a a star rating there as well. Uh, If you would like that free PDF, go to reallifepharmacology.com. It is 31 pages, a lot of info on there, a great place to start studying if you're learning pharmacology or if you're Uh, out in practice, great little refresher um, on medications and some of the things that actually come up uh, in real life clinical practice. So go snag that for free at reallifepharmacology.com. I'm always blogging at meded101.com as well. Uh, I do two logs a week typically and the overwhelming majority of those posts are on um, case scenarios, clinical pearls, Um, things that have have come out recently, maybe about medications. So lots of different uh, ways to enhance your education there. Uh, And you can find that at meded101.com and click on the blog. And of course, support meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. Any purchases there um, go to directly support this podcast uh, and help us keep it uh, free for all to benefit from uh, and enjoy. All right, well, I'm going to sign off. If you want to track me down, meteducation101 at gmail.com or Eric Christensen 
uh, FarmD, BCGP, BCPS. Find me on LinkedIn is probably the best social media platform uh, to track me down on. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, avoid, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.